Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Talking Female Health with Amy and Lisa. We are delighted to welcome you to this episode and for this episode we thought it would be a really nice idea to dive into the topic of boundaries, particularly with it being the festive season coming up with Thanksgiving and Christmas celebrations and whatever other festivals that you celebrate during this time there are times when boundaries can be crossed and this can manifest itself in many different ways that we may or may not be aware of so between us we thought from our own personal experiences it'd be really nice to share this with you and to bring this conversation to the world and see what lights up for you when you hear what we've got to say so Lisa topic of boundaries Mm. for a highly sensitive person especially it often feels like we are pulling up walls Mm -hmm. to shut out other people and they will run against this wall and they will hurt themselves and we don't want that yeah yeah um especially since christmas thanksgiving and all other festivities are usually a time of gathering of community Mm -hmm. of being together but this being together needs to be in a healthy way for everyone involved where everyone feels comfortable with what's happening and very often especially around Christmas, what I see is there are so many expectations on that time that it needs to be a festive thing, that there are certain rituals that need to be done, that people need to be in harmony together. And because there is so much pressure, like a pressure cooker, then everything explodes Mm -hmm. and everyone is screaming at each other in the end. Yeah. And And that could have been avoided. Absolutely. And if you're bringing two families together with their own traditions Mm -hmm. and their own expectations, or sometimes Mm -hmm. it's more than two families, Mm -hmm. then that, that pressure cooker really feels it. And things can get really um, turbulent for us. And I think what's really interesting for me around this topic is it's taken me years. And I mean years to, identify how giving you know my sovereignty away how allowing my boundaries to be um, compromised has impacted on my health and my well-being during this time of year because I've had really strong messages (laughs) from my body that I am not honoring myself and I think yeah, and let's is, dive in straight there. Like, yeah, yeah. What did you experience? What yeah. was happening for you? So I have, um, so our situation is that my family are, my parents are still together and my husband's parents are separated. So we kind of get spread even wider <laughs> like mm-hmm. during the festive season. And my mum is very much around like her dream like what she loves the most is having all of her family around her around the kitchen table doing all the cooking like just very much that maternal like providing role Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I really started my own family with my husband that I realized that I had an opportunity to change Christmas, like, and what the traditions were for me. And a big part of this as well was that we don't have our own, we don't have children. So um, again, Christmas is very different for you if you don't have children too, if you're obviously providing um, Christmas for the young children in particular. So there was this expectation from my family that we would all be together on Christmas day and for several 
other days in between this like short period of time between Christmas mm-hmm. and New Year where you know back when I was employed and working for the local education authority that would be my hardest time of year running up to that time and mm-hmm. I just fantasized about having a week of relaxation like just literally chilling out not having any agenda don't talk to, to me <laughs> yeah like just being like oh I can get up when I want and walk the dogs when I want I can eat when I want like all of, like it just sounded like absolute bliss to me but then there was all this pressure from we need to go here on Christmas day here on boxing day here on the 27th here on the 28th and it's just like oh and it got to the point where I would play along with it and play along with it but every year I got ill Mm -hmm. or I would feel tired even more run down and it wasn't until a few years ago that I'd made the decision and I said this with love because I know that you know my parents my family wanting me to spend Christmas with them is a really lovely thing and this is where part of the battle comes in because I felt if I put that boundary in place I would be hurting my parents and also my husband's uh, mother as well because you know she wanted to spend Christmas Day with her and this was like all of the push and the pull so we came to this compromise this was a couple of years ago where we wouldn't spend Christmas Day with anyone but we would go and visit Mm -hmm. so we set off and went and visited the different families and on Boxing Day I woke up in the morning and had the most horrendous stomach pain Hmm. that I've had and from someone who's had endometriosis like that's a big claim to make (laughs) like you know it was it was just really really and my first thoughts was oh I'm getting a bladder infection Mm-hmm. and I moved to get out of the bed and I, I I just really struggled to get myself to the toilet and in my head I was thinking if I have a really good wee I'll be fine you know so stumbled to the toilet um, and it just didn't go it was so so painful and I got so scared that I said to my husband you're gonna have to take me to the hospital because I genuinely think something really bad is happening mm-hmm. to me so he took me to the hospital, long, long wait and everything. You know, he wasn't allowed in because it was during mm-hmm. the COVID restrictions and everything. And eventually they told me that they thought I had appendicitis. Mm. And I was think, and I did think to myself, this is where my appendix is, like it's hurting, it's it's crumbling. Um So to cut a long story short, they had a conversation with me where they wanted to take me into surgery to see if it was my appendix. And I was very much of the opinion that if it wasn't life or death, I didn't want to have the surgery Mm -hmm. because I have spent years and years trying to rebuild myself after several surgeries and you know addressing scar tissue and trauma and slow bowels and everything else so I'm I had a really beautiful conversation with the surgeon where I said to him you know this is my thoughts and my feelings and I want to try and address this um in my own way like Mm -hmm. using the tools that I know and he was wonderful he was really respectful of my views um you know and obviously did advise me if it got any worse to go straight back Mm -hmm. so I was Uh, let me ask had you been in the flourish certification by then so did you know I'd literally just finished I'd just finished yeah so I went I took myself home and but at this point the pain was manageable I've got a really high pain threshold so it was you know I could I could walk and, and everything else um and I literally spent that week during Christmas and New Year really listening to my body I took 
um, a herbal supplement that I take to help um, clear my gut and um, was taking essential oils. I was doing different practices. Um, I had a really nice uh, somatic healing session with somebody. Mm. And during this session, all of this grief and pain and everything just came out of me around why can't I be important enough to myself Mm. to let myself have a quiet, peaceful, festive season? Mm. Like, why do I have to be driving all over to go and see people that I can see all year round, Mm. (laughs) you know? And, and why do, why do I have to put this, pressure on myself on my family and to cut a long story short I could feel the movement of this pain moving through my digestive tract Mm. and then I had an epic bowel movement that was not pretty at all (laughs) and I literally felt it but and and it was so funny because when I when it came to the point of me needing to go to the toilet it was like I need to get to the toilet now. Now. I need need to get this out. And it just, like, released. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this feels feels so much better. Like, it was literally like I'd let go of Mm -hmm. all of it. And moving forward, I then made this promise to myself that I wasn't going to do that to myself. So... How I manage this now is, you know, I try to say to my family, and I don't think they understand me as much as I would like, but I do say, so like, for example, this year, we're all going to see Father Christmas on Christmas Eve with with the young children. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be a a fairly busy afternoon and evening. And then that is my Christmas time with them. You know, because on reflection, when I was going to see my family at Christmas, whether we were calling in or staying for a meal or whatever, you know, the children are completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Like they've had all these presents. They haven't slept well the night before because they're so excited about Father Christmas coming. Like, so it wasn't like I was getting the best version of my nibblings Mm -hmm. when I was with them. You know, I I wasn't being able to enjoy them opening their presents. And, you know, I made the decision that presents moving forward are going to be experiences with myself and my husband. So, Mm. you know, because to me, there's nothing more valuable than someone giving you all of their attention, (laughs) you know, like just being, especially as a young child. And I was just like, okay, so I don't need to be there. I don't need to be you know anti of the year turning up with a Christmas present Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they've had that they're overwhelmed with all that like Mm -hmm. it my sisters are overwhelmed because they've had to make that magic happen Mm -hmm. for their children and you know my parents are overwhelmed because my mum puts this pressure on herself bless her to make this amazing Christmas for everybody you know like Mm -hmm. and it's just like everybody's under all this pressure and it's exactly like you described, like this cooking pot of pressure where we're all together, like with these expectations that are completely ludicrous and not needed. And yeah, it wasn't until literally, you know, because before I'd, my IBS would flare up or I'd have, I'd have something that would cause me discomfort. But that was the time when my body literally was like, you need to stop and you yeah. need to listen. And it's happened a couple of times since where I've gone against that advice and I've gone to do things that I haven't wanted to do and I've ended up with that, you know, deep abdominal pain again of just like, you will listen because Mm -hmm. this is not what is serving you. Like, this is not who you need to be. And really just helped me reframe the whole of the festive season because like I said I want people to get as good a version of me as they can if we're celebrating together so that has to be on my terms Mm. 
because if I'm doing something that doesn't fill me up or doesn't bring me joy you know we talked about joy in the previous episode like it's not it's not authentically me yeah so really and you know and just trying to have these conversations with my family where it's and I, we have a little bit of a, a joke where the eye rolls when because I, I always say Mm -hmm. This is coming from a place of love. Like I always start, whenever I'm putting a boundary in place, I always start with that because I think it is. Like it is coming from a place of love, a love for myself, a love for that individual that I'm putting the boundary up in. And it's really hard, you know, when you're ch trying to change someone else's behavior towards you. Well, you can't. No, no. So all you can do is yeah. stand your ground and re reaffirm this is coming from a place of love yeah I need to be able to put this boundary in place for our relationship to be able to be happy and healthy and you know for for me to be able to give you the best version of me yeah and you never know what it will uh, bring out in the other person who then gives themselves permission to yeah. put up their own boundaries or rethink, do I actually want this? Do I like the tradition that we're having, yeah. the rituals that we're practicing? Or would I like something different? Yeah, I'm always reminded of that moment. I, I took an online course once and we had this Facebook group and there was a lady who reached out to me if we wanted to be accountability buddies. And I was like, at the time I didn't want to because... Mm. Um, I was talking to a lot of people about the things we were learning and I didn't want another person yes. <laughs> I have to talk about that. So I was like, sorry, I don't need an accountability partner, but I would be very open to be your accountability buddy if you wanted to mm -hmm. share with me. That yeah. was totally okay with me. And then she withdrew and didn't say anything, didn't send a message for two weeks. <laughs> and then she came... Hey, Lisa, you know, that was actually very helpful. Thank you for putting up that boundary because it made me reflect on myself. And I learned that I only reached out because I prefer like hanging myself, like piggybacking on other people, piggybacking on other people yeah. <laughs> so that I don't have to do the work. And so she was actually grateful that I set that boundary in place. So you never know if maybe through your boundary as as And maybe boundary isn't even the right word. I sometimes say it's prioritizing myself. Yeah. Like you say, it's prioritizing yeah. your needs uh, so that you are well nourished when you're with the people you love. Absolutely. And and yeah. so sometimes stating that can actually set everyone free. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. And especially, you know, just sticking with the theme of Christmas and Thanksgiving, like, when it comes to the expectation around presence and magic, like creating magic. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, I I don't know, do you have this in Germany? Do you have Elf on a Shelf? Is that a thing? Uh, no. Okay. So, yeah, we have a, a recent tradition that's come to the UK where instead of, like, I think it's alongside Advent Hollanders, um, mm -hmm. an elf, on the 1st of December appears like a toy elf Ooh. and parents move it around the house so each morning it's oh wow it's done something silly <laughs> like put toilet roll on the you know Christmas decorations or you know whatever that whatever it is and then we've had again another recent thing that's come across is like Christmas Eve boxes mm -hmm. so We have the elf on the shelf that brings like treats and whatever else. Then we've got the Christmas, the Christmas Eve boxes. Then we have Father Christmas. You open the gifts on Christmas Day. That's the tradition here. So, like, I see a lot of my friends stressing themselves out mm. with what the chuff is this elf going to do tonight? Like, I've got to 11 o'clock at yeah. night. I'm shattered. Like, what's the next trick it's going to do? Like, And then the, you know, the matching pajamas is a thing recently. Like all of this stuff that, like, mm -hmm. Instagrammable Christmas, mm -hmm. I call it. All of this pressure that they're putting on themselves to create this experience for their family and their children. 
and it must be exhausting Mm -hmm. like exhausting and you know I will say to my friends I'm like I know it's really easy for me to say this because I haven't got children but you can make Christmas so magical without that Mm -hmm. like personally looking back at my Christmases when I was younger it was the most magical time of my life (laughs) you know I just the whole the whole part of it was just so so magical but I didn't have all the other stuff Mm -hmm. and I just feel that going back to boundaries like we've got to be protective of our children's boundaries and overstimulating them with excitement uh you know like just I do I feel for these kids because they're completely like wired up with excitement the first of December still having to go to school or daycare or Mm -hmm. whatever it is and, and conform there and remain calm and not be giddy and and just all of these experiences that they're having where I just think oh my gosh like as a child, I would have just been beside myself because, like, just just the thought of Father Christmas coming on Christmas Eve mm. was... <laughs> was magical. enough, right? Yeah, it was magical enough. So I do think there's a part of it where we need to take a bit of a step back and think, what is this actually giving? Like, and what... How am I... Um supporting my children in their boundaries if I'm just overstimulating mm. them does that make sense like all the yeah time. and there is another part that I want to throw mm. into the mix is this um it's this more 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 idea that runs through our capitalist society mm-hmm. of like yeah. it's never enough it always has to be more bigger brighter shinier yeah. And that is exhausting because we're running after an ideal that is unattainable Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we are forgetting the present moment. And really, like when you look at children, they don't even need toys. They take the most basic household things and play with it because they have got this this big sense of imagination. We all have. We just at some point unlearn it. Yeah. And so, and, like, it, it's not that there is much needed no. to, to do. Or and big tricks the elf needs to play. Yeah, yeah. And on a really basic level, like, looking back on, again, on my Christmases and, and just periods of time through my life, like, just having my mum and dad's attention and having that period of time where they're not working between Christmas and New mm-hmm. Year, and it's that magical time where no one knows what day of the week it is, and mm-hmm. you know, like there's no yeah. there's no rules to follow and no no stress in that as- aspect. So, mum and dad start to decompress and have fun and play with the toys, and you know, like all of that is where the value and the memories come from mm-hmm. that are really really important. And I think we're we're forgetting that. Yeah. It's always yeah. it's present. Yeah. <laughs> Presence is yes. a present. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I do think they go together very well, these yeah. words. Definitely. Yeah. I think for me yeah. it's all a little different because I like my parents separated when I was five. And so like we we never really had any Christmas traditions. My mom wasn't fond of Christmas out of her own childhood experiences. And so it, for me, it has been the longest time, a moment of, okay, what do I want to do? Like, with whom do I want to spend Christmas? How would I like to experience it? And also, like, would I like to sing songs? Would I like to, I don't know, recite a poem or whatnot? do I want a fancy three course dinner (laughs) or is it okay to just, I don't know, snuggle with my husband on the couch. Yeah. Mm. And actually like last year was the time where my, I wouldn't say biggest dream, but I've always been interested in what would it be like to celebrate Christmas on my own (laughs) last week, uh, last year, 
because I was still experiencing horrendous menstrual pain. And I knew that the 24th or mm. the 25th would be the time when my menstruation starts. So I stayed at home. And here in Germany, the 24th, so what's in your world, Christmas Eve is the main yeah. event. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my husband, he, I think he felt a little guilty, even though I was telling him, hey, I'm fine when you mm. go see your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a problem with it, but everybody else seemed to have a problem yeah. with me staying on my own on Christmas. And I was just like, oh, I'm watching Christmas movies. I'm making myself some dinner. I'm going for a walk. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and now I know what it's like to be on my own on Christmas. And I don't need to have that every year. It's also yeah. nice to be with family. <laughs> yeah. But there, it's also nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. No, you can I have a lovely time by yourself. Absolutely. That sounds so blissful what you just <laughs> what you just described. I'm like, ooh, yeah. Minus yeah. the pain that started oh. later that evening. But Abs yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So so interesting. Like just so much comes up at this time of year around boundaries and just on a social level as well like we get asked to go to more social events if you are working in a, a business a community an office then you have like the office Christmas party and you know all, all of these expectations for you to turn up and enjoy yourself and sometimes that's great like if it's something that floats your boat and you want to do it that's absolutely yes. fine but sometimes, you know, you might just be feeling, I don't actually want to do that. Like that isn't feeling in alignment with me at this point in time. And, you know, this is the same all year round. But again, just that feeling that you're letting people down if yeah. you decline an inv invitation or, um, you know, decide not to, to go with the majority on something. And yeah, like back to your example of the lady that reached out for accountability and, mm -hmm. you know, giving her that, that gift. And, you know, one thing that, that comes to mind for me around Christmas is, you know, that there is a lot of financial pressure. Mm -hmm. And I can remember a few years ago, you know, one of my friends messaging out saying, oh gosh, you know, now I've got children, there's just so many more people to buy for. And there was this social group that she was involved in. And the previous year, everyone in this social group had bought her child a gift. Mm -hmm. So she had this pressure that she had to buy gifts for these other children. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I just, you know, and she, she's always been of this um, belief that her children have too many toys like they don't play with them all like it's sometimes it's a burden to get gifts for the kids rather than you know just because they they, they just don't have the space to store them or all, all of the things so I just said to her look why don't you just send a message to this whatsapp group just saying something along the lines of you know, we all wish you a really beautiful festive season with your families. Just to let you know, we won't be buying gifts this year. We feel that the children have enough and we're focusing more on experiences or, you know, like whatever, mm -hmm. it, whatever it was. I can't remember how I worded it. And I said, because I can guarantee you the other people receiving that message will be having a massive sigh mm -hmm. of relief. Yeah, just like that's less to do like that's something yes. off the to-do list like or you know I think I even put the suggestion in of why don't we all meet up after mm -hmm. Christmas in the park or you know just do something yeah. where the kids are playing or whatever you know that didn't yeah. have to cost anything and you know she was just it was almost like she needed me to give her the mm -hmm. permission mm -hmm. to send the message yeah. and you know I could relate to that because I've been in situations like that before where I'm thinking and you know I really like to think about my gifting as well so 
if I'm in a secret Santa or something at work and I get someone that I know nothing about, I'm just thinking, mm. oh, I'm literally just buying something for the value of it rather than something that she's actually, that I know this person's really going to like. Mm. Um, so yeah, so anybody listening who needs permission to step away from those traditions and to, to suggest something different, then we are giving you it now. <laughs> <laughs> this is your permission. Yeah. Definitely. And there is one other thing that um, I was thinking about is that when you make yourself go to, for example, a party that you're invited to and that you feel obliged to go to, the energy with which you show mm. up yeah. will probably not be positively contributing to the whole situation. Like I, I don't mean to say that when you don't feel good, you will make everyone else unhappy. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just you won't enjoy yourself as much as you could. Yeah. <laughs> and and they like for them it might not even matter. Like they will possibly not be unhappy because mm -hmm. you are unhappy, but um they I think they would prefer to see you there when you want to show up fully. Absolutely. And then like it the, the joy gets amplified. Yeah. Instead of feeling on some level at least that you don't really want to be there yeah and they want the best for you too of I course yeah that. yeah and just to tie it back into why we're talking about this on a podcast about female health <laughs> is because uh, this topic of boundaries of sovereignty of inner personal power and knowing our yes and our no from moment to moment you know it can always change right just because you say no to this occasion today doesn't mean you will forever say no to that person or other opportunities like that um but this sacred yes and no is so heavily tied to our health it's connected to our pelvic bowl our pelvis our hip, hips and i think it it was not a coincidence that it showed up in your bowels, <laughs> which also lie in these re in this region. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's even important for your personal health, for your pelvic health, even that you take good care of your own energy and what you really want to say yes to and yeah. what you prefer to say no not right now yeah not for me not right now and also to another thing that's just come into my head is particularly around the festive season to ask for help mm -hmm. so if you are somebody who wants to have everybody at your home and you know host and that's that's where you get your joy that's absolutely fine but it's also absolutely fine for you to ask for help so yes. you can ask others to bring parts of the meal or to um you know bring the drinks or you can yes. you can delegate the tasks out to people and that's absolutely fine as well you don't have to put mm -hmm. everything on on your own shoulders and that is a part of putting a boundary in place as well that you know yes I really want to do this I want to share this experience with you all but I need some help in doing it and yeah. again <clears throat> when you start to delegate in that way you know similar to what Lisa was just saying about turning up to an event when you want if you really want to be there like if you're delegating out to people tasks it makes it more of a a community event yes and it, it can you know you can think oh yeah I really I'm really excited that my mum's asked me to do the puddings and I'm mm. going to do something really lovely for everybody and really feel like I've contributed to this day and not feel the guilt of seeing them do everything mm -hmm. um so there's that side of it as well that is is important yeah true um and also you can pour all your love into this one thing <laughs> mm. because you don't have to think of a million other things yes. at the same time yeah. and it's again this social narrative of it's all 
on you yeah. and you have to make and you are alone and you're not supposed to yeah. ask for help let's break that paradigm yeah. this is a paradigm shift folks. definitely yeah yeah you know you don't need to have all the trimmings you don't need to have the crackers and the you know 15 courses and all the right cutlery and different glasses like you don't need any of that <laughs> either like because people don't remember that people remember the connection with each other and you know it's not it's not about the little details that you bring into the table because it's christmas day like you know you are just as valuable without mm -hmm. all of the the fancy trimmings um yep. because people just want to to spend time with you and and, and if they don't maybe you should question <laughs> the circles you are in <laughs> yeah so don't you know don't be putting that over pressure on yourself and thinking that it has to be this amazing event because you know here in england christmas a christmas meal is a glorified roast dinner mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know the vast majority of the country traditionally eat every sunday so mm -hmm. you don't need to have 25 different vegetables and four different meats and you know a fish course and whatever like that that doesn't need to happen for it to be a magical um you know wonderful experience for everybody yeah yeah and i think we've given folks a lot to think about <laughs> and sit with right now yeah <laughs> yeah but I'm very curious, and I guess that holds true for Amy as well, about what's coming up for you as you are listening or watching what we are sharing here. And if you've got anything you want to share with us, share it in the comments, leave yeah. us a comment, uh, ask a question or a clarification if you need, reach out through our personal channels. Uh, we are just enjoying being in community and having a conversation around these topics that aren't often talked about out there. Yeah, absolutely. Like would really like, like as Lisa said, I'd really love to know what's resonated for you from what we've talked. Like if anything has come up for you, whether we've discussed that topic or not, um, or that aspect of, christmas or boundaries or thanksgiving or you know festive seasons let us know because this is a huge huge topic like there is so much we can talk about on this so definitely reach out and let us know your thoughts and your feelings love that yeah okay then speak to you next time yeah see you in the next episode bye, bye.